Greetings everybody, white positive people on Sunday, March 7th. Today is my daughter's birthday. She's two years old today in Belarus. And it's nighttime over there, so they already had a day of celebration and birthday, big balloons, nice cake and everything. Uh, they really did it up proper style. So I'm glad they did all that. Daughter had a beautiful second birthday. So happy birthday to uh, my little one. Special day, March 7th, um, Sunday. And of course Sunday is also going three day as usual with the great um, Jason Kuna, uh, Mr. No White Guilt um, on his channel. And uh, that's always good. And um, anyhow, Blue Ninja here at your service, one of many apostles for white well-being. Coming to you with a quick one today from uh, East LA. <laughs> uh, before I head back up to uh, Tracy, um, close to the Bay Area. Not quite all the way up there, thank God. <laughs> thank, thank my lucky stars every time I can stay away from that cesspool. But I'm in a cesspool right now, so go figure. Anti-white, that is. Um, so, um, yes, just wanted to come with a few things to share and report here. Um, my warmest and best to everyone, all my humblest and sincerest love respect appreciation admiration and support sincerely mean all those things as you know to each and every one and appreciate and thank everybody for everything you're doing for western kind and uh we're all making sacrifices as we all know we are all doing things every single day for our people why because it's the right thing to do obviously when any group of people are enduring inhumane circumstances it's right to help them and we can see that society is totally um, controlled by these anti-whites and so it is hard to get it across to people what's going on which makes our task even more challenging and even more great and heroic to serve our people at these times um, so it's absolutely right it is absolutely heroic it is challenging but very rewarding that is why we all do it so Thank you to each and every one for making sacrifices every single day uh, that only the Lord probably knows about completely to save our people. And I hope there's a reward for us in heaven, um, amongst other things. So, um, in the meantime, we're trying to make things a little bit better here on earth. So, get right to it here. Um, as I don't have a lot of time at the moment, um, so I'll make it relatively quick. 40 minutes later, I'll probably be saying, whoop, wasn't so quick, but we'll see. Um, here we go, so first thing I thought of is I wanna report that, um, as y'all know, got a few props for this one. Um, the old familiar prop. I was wearing this bad boy, good boy, yesterday and all of you have seen this the good old go-to bread and butter no white guilt and uh, go free with white well-being no white guilt org on the back so um, very powerful very loud very big very visible as you can see there's no missing this and that's exactly what I wanted so just a couple things to report yesterday as my day went on I decided, hey, screw it, I'm gonna keep wearing this thing as I got into LA. And um, I was gonna take it off when I worked, when I made my delivery um, to a big company distribution center. But I was like, screw it. Didn't quite get a chance to, to change it off before I arrived. So I was like, screw it, I'm gonna wear it. If they don't like it, then the company's anti-white. And I was ready to have it out with them. Went into another truck stop wearing it in LA East LA here. Now that's what I'm gonna report on here. Nobody challenged me at the company. 
they knew better, you know, apparently, and they stayed professional, which is what people should do. Anyhow, when I went into the truck stop, just a quick little thing here, is I noticed that people, you know, I, as I've said, I noticed people looking at it, which you can imagine people would look at something like this, as big as it is, as noticeable. And you can imagine that if you're wearing it, you can see that, <laughs> you know, people are, are giving you looks right, right down here. So obviously it's not a common message these days. It sticks out. Um, anyhow, just a quick thing to report on the truck stop I went to here in East LA. Um, and, uh, here it is definitely pretty anti-white and it, I notice, I do notice looks that are friendly and unfriendly. I notice that when whites look at it and they seem to be kind of liking it, kind of like, mm, yeah. And, um, you know, I notice it when people seem to be not liking it as well with nothing said, but just the expressions and so forth. So you notice these things. Um, obviously when you can tell that people are liking it, that's a victory. And you know that they're white positive or have the potential to, to be so, usually white people that are kind of looking at it like, yeah, I like that. That's good. No white guilt. Yeah. It's usually the white person response. If they have any sanity left in them. Um, but of course there are anti-whites and there are dirty looks. Um, and, um, some of them not so extreme, some of them just mild usually. Um, when I went into this truck stop yesterday, I noticed, um, at the cash register, it was a non-white looking woman and slightly non-white if you get my drift. And... I noticed that she kind of looked at it and was just kind of like, you know, a little bit of, hmm, one of those. Like she didn't quite like it. And kind of wanted to just make the transaction, send me on my way. You know, you get that feeling. Um, like, whoa, what, what, what is that? And um, didn't say anything but got that look. So now, this is expected with so many anti-whites around and um, um, you know I as we should just take that stuff in stride um, and uh, most people um, are not anti-whites are not going to say anything to it. They might give you a look of dismay But most of them are smart enough not to say anything because they know they can't challenge that message Say wow, I've never seen that before. That's not in the anti-white narrative. No white kill. I don't like it But I can't say anything. Most of them are smart enough to recognize that some are not smart enough And then they will get defeated by us if they want to challenge that kind of a statement um there was another time I remember notably in Las Vegas. I mean, in Las Vegas, when I wore this, I get lots of dirty looks. <laughs> and uh, it's, and I remember one in particular when I got on a bus there um, this past summer, a while ago. The bus driver, I stepped onto the bus right there, you know, and you know, the bus driver just sees you right there up close and paying the bus fare and all that. They get a good chance to get a good look at it. And I remember this bus driver, this dark non-white female bus driver, just looking at it and going like, just giving me the most blatant look of disgust she could give me like. And uh, I just said, all right, thank you very much. I'm getting on the bus now. <laughs> Didn't say anything. Anyhow, those things happen. Um, and then after on that on that bus trip back in the summer in Las Vegas, after I made my little trip and I was coming back um, to the hotel I was staying at, I got off the bus and there was a dark non-white man that decided he was going to say something and challenge me. And he said, "Hey, nobody's nobody's asking you for that, or you know, nobody's 
asking for that message and I was saying, saying, what do you mean? So nobody's saying, you know, white guilt that, you know, he was saying essentially nobody's saying white people should feel guilty. And I was like, oh, really? I beg to differ. But anyway, he's saying, no, no, but nobody's, you know, putting that on you. Why, why are you, you know, uh, defending um, with that kind of a message saying no white guilt? You know, and he was saying like, well, why? Nobody's, you know, saying the contrary to you. And I, we all know that's not true. They are trying to white guilt us constantly. So, but I just said, uh, I don't remember what I said, but I said maybe, you know, yeah, people are, you know, trying to push uh, guilt on white people and I'm just saying no white guilt. What's wrong with that message? Is there a problem? And he was just like, ah, blah, blah, blah. And, and then he started saying something about, <laughs> I think he just started saying something about slavery or something in the anti-white narrative. And I was like, whoa, anti-white, 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 anti-white. And then he just got on his bike and I chased him. I mean, he just, he um, just ran away, bicycled away across the street as I was yelling anti-white at him louder and louder. So I chased him away with that word and he fled. So that was the, uh, the, the confrontation on that particular outing. Las Vegas, just unfathomably anti-white. Um, anyhow. When I wear this, when I walk into truck stops or anywhere else, especially yesterday, especially as I wear it more and more, I walk tall. I walk taller. I walk taller when I wear this. Now, I feel more confident and more ready and more white positive and more ready to serve white well-being than ever when I have this on my shoulders. A lot of people will say, oh my gosh, you wear something like that, something that blatantly white positive, then, ooh, that's, that's, that's a time when people think they're going to be afraid, think they're going to be timid, etc. Um, well, for me, what happens is the opposite. I become more confident and I walk taller because I feel like, yes, I am representing my people. I am doing the right thing and it's right here as a reminder. And I feel it and I see it all the time. It's a constant reminder that I'm wearing a tunic, a cloak of armor that defends my people, that is the right thing. I am defending and supporting my people, which is the right thing to do. So I feel good about that when I wear this makes me feel better than ever and I walk taller than ever when I wear this and more confident so that's what this does for me and I think it will for all of you when you um, start doing this which I hope you all will if you want shirts get them from Raymond Foster um, and I'll facilitate if you want me to to send them um, but that's what it does. Makes you feel, makes you walk taller and feel more confident because you know you are doing the right thing. You know you are standing up for the right cause, which is on behalf of white people nowadays more than ever. So first little note about that. The other, that was the end of my day. I wore this through the whole day yesterday. Today I'm gonna give it a little rest because I gotta go to my company yard and stuff. And, scale it back a little bit but I do have another prop which I'll show here real quick again um, I know it's backwards reading but I think you all can read this pretty well and if you can read it backwards that means people are gonna definitely read it forwards so this is my little idea that I've been tossing around for a while not obviously a big idea um, or anything new but just something I've uh, wanted to put on a, on a sign um, as a uh, type of a way of um, displaying this message. I've been thinking about making signs, you know, bigger signs to so just hold, you know, on the street, on the sidewalk, on a freeway exit ramp, who knows? Outside a store, anywhere where it's legal, but just wherever people will see it, I've been thinking about, yeah, I want to just kind of post up somewhere, put up the sign. 
and just, you know, um, so this is what I'm going to be doing, uh, at some point fairly soon, displaying this for people, uh, to see, and as you can all see and read, anti-whiteism is wrong, anti-whiteism is wrong, and this is not a huge, um, um, sign here so I couldn't write a lot no, other ideas things I've wanted to put on um, you know poster type of things are um, white people are being erased white people are being erased I think that would be powerful to display like this on a sign um, and uh, multiracialism is erasing white people that's another one and then this one just anti-whiteism is wrong it's wrong It'll give it a name so that people see anti-whiteism. Yes, I knew that's what's going on. And white people will say, I knew I felt a lot of hostility directed at me, at white people. And say, that's exactly what it is. Beautiful word, anti-whiteism. It is wrong, of course. And they'll say, ah, that defends us, you know, as whites. That finally defends us effectively, represents us. So that's my little... Uh, next thing I'm going to do there, as far as signage goes, all done with the the great Excalibur um, Sharpie marker that I got a while ago when I first made uh, No White Gill shirts by hand. This is the Magnum version of the Sharpie, probably the biggest one I've ever seen. Um, this is my sword and the Excalibur affectionately a huge pen pen can be mightier than the sword right here sharpie magnum um, and then as far as the real meat of the matter which uh, inspired this video um, to mention real quick quick but hard-hitting points I think very important a um, couple things I saw coming into LA last night one billboard two messages on one billboard. It was one of those electronic billboards which cycles through different displays. They've gotten so clever they can put multiple things on the same billboard. We know that takes money. We know that who has the most of the money, anti-whites right now. Anyhow, I've been talking about this movie, Coming to America, Eddie Murphy, this dark, non-white, very anti-white movie, the sequel to the original back in the 80s I think this is being pushed all over I mean this shows how anti-whites how fervent they are how feverish they are to push their anti-whiteism with just just how hard they're pushing that one movie Amazon one of the biggest companies in the world is totally like produced it is totally behind it advertising it like never before I mean the money they're putting into advertising this movie has got to be insane and it's popping up on billboards everywhere just just entire billboards for this one movie it's, it's crazy obviously why is there so much energy effort and money going into advertising this movie because it's very anti-white and uh, that's why it's being pushed so hard now so obviously it's a pitiful attempt by the anti-whites to be anti-white to push mean pathogens to erase white people but that's what they're doing. That's all they got, fine. They're pathetic, we know that. Now the other bigger point here, the main point, main event, if you all are ready, and I know you are, main point here was that billboard flipped the electronic to the other message on it, and it said, March is Women's Month, or Women's History Month. Might have just been Women's Month. March. Women's Month. Women's Month. So, just like I've been talking about, just like everybody can see uh, by now for sure, that, that the anti-whites are just giving their props and their kudos and their pacification to all the non-white groups. And now women. 
So we've seen Latino Pride Month. We've seen, quote, Native American, American Indian Pride Month. Of course, Black History Month and BLM. Lots of lots of attention on the dark non-whites. And, um, and then there was this stuff about anti-Asian, quote, anti-Asian hate crimes. So the media running to their defense of the Asian people. So they didn't get quite as much of the spotlight, but they still got some of it on major news networks. And, um, you know, so Latinos, Native American, American Indians, um, Asians, dark non-whites, of course, blacks, um, so on and so forth. So those are the major ones. Then, now, wouldn't you know it? And, of course, there's plenty of stuff that highlights homosexuals um, and the like and um, disabled people which I think is also kind of fits into their agenda, the anti-whites. Especially those that wear tiny hats, the wedges, if you spell J-E-W backwards. Um, so lo and behold, just as I've been talking about, just as everybody can see, they're just going through all those non-white groups. And now women, and of course they love the, the, the anti-whites, they love to push women's rights just as much as non-white rights and on and on so with feminism etc so here it is the latest bit of anti-whiteism in the form of appearing to celebrate a particular group of people this in this case it's women um, So now, and this billboard said, okay, March is Women's Month or whatever, and then it said, specifically, I got notes here that I'm looking at, written on the back of this beautiful flyer from Raymond Foster against anti-whiteism in the form of propaganda, um, white guilt propaganda, that is um, child abuse, anti-white child abuse. Get these from Raymond Foster. Get them from me if you want. Just let me know. Let him know. Whoever. Um, so, beautiful flyer. Works as a no card too. Um, double purpose. Beautiful thing. So, wrote it down here. This this billboard actually said March Women's Month, and it also then added right on the billboard. It said. Um, celebrating a record, quote, record number of women in Congress. So that's what it said. Celebrating, quote, a record number of women in Congress. This is to be interpreted, in my opinion, humbly, as celebrating the demise of America. That's what happens when a country is falling to the ground when an empire is completely crumbling to rubble. It is the final stages, when it is all but dust on the dirt, on the ground. That's what happens. It's nothing against ladies, but when you have mostly women, or a large number of women, in politics and government, um, it's not a good sign. <laughs> it's a sign of an empire of a country in serious trouble that's on its last legs. Um, on one of its, you know, last breaths, so to speak. But still not over yet. We can breathe life back into this entity and make it white positive once again. That's how we can save the West, of course. But right now, it needs a lot of rehabilitation in very, very bad, critical condition shape. Very bad shape. We're in intensive care right now as whites in the West. Um, but we're coming back little by little, and it will be it's exponential. So um, now, so that's to be read as when they start celebrating the record number of women in Congress, that is to be decoded as these are the anti-whites anti celebrating the demise and the fall of this country, because that's 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 a sign of that. 
that's what that indicates. Now, most people probably won't realize it. They think, oh, that's great. Good for those women. Well, no. It's bad for the country. Women are good at certain things. Men are good at other things. It's just the way it is. Um, now, again, we need to remember... What are they really doing when they're, quote, celebrating the record number of women in Congress? And, quote, celebrating women, women's month, etc., etc., etc. Celebrating women this month. What are they really doing, as we know, just like when they're s supposedly celebrating all those non-whites before? What are they really doing? As we know, when they, when they appear to be celebrating those different non-white groups, are they really celebrating them? No. We know they are just trying to downgrade... Um, white people um, those are anti-white messages first and foremost now it's the same thing with this women stuff when they are supposedly celebrating women what are they really doing they are degrading men that is the primary purpose of that not to really celebrate those women but maybe it's a secondary purpose, maybe not, who knows. But the first purpose is to downgrade and degrade the men. And to disable, to oppress, to harm the men. And what kind of men in particular? White men, of course. That's really the, 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 the only target there. Not all men, but just white men. That's who's being attacked with something like this that is supposedly celebrating women. So you all are looking at <laughs> public enemy number one right here um, by the anti-whites. So um, all you fellow white men out there like me, be proud that you all, we all, are considered public enemy number one by the anti-whites. What an honor that is. Right here. I am the face of the number one enemy of the anti-whites. So, I'm going to say thank you anti-whites for that honor. Incredible honor to be targeted so much. Not really, but we'll just say that for now. We can handle them. White man out there, we can handle them, right? No problem. Um, easy, easy pickings for us to just dust those anti-whites from, from our midst. Um, blue ninja style, white apostle style, for white well-being, for western kind. Now, um, <sighs> that's about it. Um, I will leave this relatively short as I promised um, um, sort of delivering on that one now we're at about a half hour and I will just say um, finish off another little bit of insight um, to me my opinion is that um, Anti-whiteism really is a silly thing. It really does not make any sense. I mean, it ultimately is not... Um, it's not sensible at all. We all know this, but I mean, it really... It really is silly and childish and immature, in my opinion. I mean, it truly is. It's, it's not... I mean... There really is, as we know, there truly is no legitimate reason for it. I mean, that's that's clear. Um, but even as far as their hatred for us, the anti-whites, there, there really is no reason for that. I mean, it's just... And what I'm talking about here is on the big scale. So, think, think about this. One particular race is hated above all others and we're trying to be erased um, 
I mean, they are trying to, anti-whites are trying to erase us. So think about that. We, there's nothing about us that warrants that, um, good or bad. We haven't done anything bad enough to warrant that. And I mean, we've done a lot of great things, but I don't think we've done anything <laughs> that should be envied that much. Um, Basically, what I'm talking about here is obviously we should celebrate ourselves. We should be proud of ourselves. We have done a lot of great things. And every race should be proud of themselves. But every race also has weaknesses. So, you know, every race should be honest, I think. Now, we are no different. Now, you know, So we don't need to be overly cocky or anything. We just need to be confident. Um, and um, basically, um, and here's my thinking on this. Every race has strengths and weaknesses. And it's because of, you could say evolution, where um, just, by nature, where races have evolved and spent most of their time, they had to acquire certain skills more so than others, and it's just it's just sort of the way it happened. It's sort of chance where certain races came onto this, came into being on this planet, and um, that kind of dictated um, the skills they acquired. That's just nature. So, every race has strengths and weaknesses. So ultimately, it's, you know, it's, it's, that's ultimately what it is. Now, we just happen to have certain strengths as wise because of, we evolved mostly in cold climates, I think, so. Um, so we have light skin for one thing, it's a cold climate, um, effect and, um, you know, lack of sun blending in with the environment, which is white when it's icy and snowy, um, and cold and so forth. Um, and, you know, all kinds of other things about us, our physique, the way our physiques are kind of moderate, not huge, not small. Um, the, the foods we can digest, dairy and so forth. Um, our bodily composition, it's set up for cold weather because that's where we mostly evolve, evolved in these cold climates. Um, we also have brains. The brains really came in handy where we spent a lot of our time as whites. Um, we had to have brains to survive and that, um, that was a skill, brain power, brain skill that was very, um, very conducive to survival in those environments. So that's a skill we developed, um, brain power, brain ability, brain function. So whites are pretty smart, pretty intelligent um, uh, as humans come in the scheme of things. So we got we got pretty good brains and amongst other skills. Um, but every race, including us, has weaknesses as well. It's just dictated by nature, I think, mostly. Now look at the dark non-whites. They're sort of on the other end. They, I would say, are not so gifted up here but they have more abilities in general, physically. And that's just because of where, mostly because of where they evolved. It was what their climate um, required. So it's just, you know, Asians different as well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, go through all the races. So it's just different strengths and weaknesses. So no skill or set of skills should be hated or liked necessarily above others some you could say are maybe more valuable or, but I mean ultimately it's just different and it's 
nature is the selector and you could say God so that is why it really seems like these anti-whites these tiny hats especially when they are imposing white erasure and anti-whiteism they are ultimately going against nature to pick out one race and say ah oh, we hate that above all it doesn't uh, there's no rhyme or reason to that um, so ultimately that is hating nature because it's we are a product of nature it's nature's work just like everything else and you could say God's work so that's why it really seems like these anti-whites the tiny hats in particular the wedges are they are they are against God or against nature you could say at the very least so that's that's why I think that's what's going on it's not we are the target right now but I think there's a bigger scheme there they're rebelling against God and nature as a whole so these are very messed up people because um, no one ultimately nature you could say God um, is a religious thing ultimately has the last say so um, nature and God ultimately come out victorious so um, it's it's a foolhardy thing obviously to try to fight that we are not we are not so silly as the anti-whites that's why we are white positive and we serve white well-being and why we are on the side of victory because we are on the side of the Lord um, and on the side of nature so let's keep and we are helping to save the West um, so keep up the good work Thanks for watching, as usual, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed the little props that I brought out here. And um, anti-whiteism is wrong. It stops with you and me and all of us. So I love you all. God bless each and every one. Stay strong. Stay white positive. Stay white proud. I'll see you in a little bit, and let's keep going. Three.